welcome to lecture 5 i have received excellent words and queries from several dignitaries for our previous discussions thank you all for your kind note and inspiration i will upload more useful videos to complete the lecture series for the refractory and steel fraternity this lecture briefly highlights certain mechanical properties including elastic modulus, cold crushing strength and cold modulus of rupture. These may answer several common questions during the research and development of refractories and their failure analysis during steel production. We can start with a couple of common questions mandated to discuss that eventually help us both R&D work and performance analysis. Among several mechanical responses, the variation of these three crucial properties concerning pore content and temperature influences control over the refractory performance. These are not only data, rather answers of several questions and many more. How can we achieve all these properties according to user specifications or how shall we fix these specifications? To answer this, we have to brief three properties, elastic modulus, compressive strength and cold modulus of rupture. Elastic modulus is nothing but stress by strain and this intrinsic property depends on the bond strength between two atoms. Ceramic has the highest elastic modulus, it will take the slope sigma on this by this, whereas high strength polymer has the lowest modulus. Metal and metal ceramic composite are in between this. Ceramic has higher compressive strength than tensile strength and it can be obtained from the ratio of load by area. This is the area. However, bending strength combines both compression and tensile. This is the tensile. Where the tensile zone is much more prone to fracture and all of them will be discussed in more detail. Usually, refractory testing is done through the three point bending method not the four point bending method. This method also known as the flexural test depends on dimension and load rate and some standard protocol should be maintained. Let us start our discussion with the properties of different qualities of insulation bricks and high alumina dense brick. As we know Thermal stress is the product of the coefficient of thermal expansion, elastic modulus and temperature difference. Thus, elastic modulus and alpha value are critical to select the refractory for a particular zone of interest. Insulation brick 1 consisting of a low density that means high porosity may float on water. Also, it is an excellent choice to put a temperature up to 1260 degrees centigrade. This brick has very high porosity, very low CCS, low MOR, thus needs low stress to break. If we do this, then it may, it may like this for insulation and for high dense may this. And has low elastic modulus resulting in low thermal stress. So, if stress is equal to if the thermal stress is this alpha E and delta E, if this product of these two becomes low, then the system can accommodate more delta that means temperature difference that means th it can resist more thermal shock 
from this data and the bricks appearance this data this data and and this and from this is example of one insulating brick this is the dense brick it is obvious that every refractory has particular specifications in the perspective of the application of interest while comparing dense 85 percent high alumina brick and insulation brick 2 both can resist the same temperature and both have near to 80 percent alumina content although dense has a bit of more still the manufacturing process and porosity control the different degrees of mechanical responses for example h85 has 20 times higher compressive strength and 6 times higher mr than insulation bricks thus the former may be a good choice for high load bearing and direct abrasion resistance lining rather insulation brick is an excellent choice to protect against thermal shock or as backup lining where certain cushioning effects can accommodate during operation despite the cumulative discussion some fundamentals of elastic modulus influence of porosity temperature measuring protocols and few data may provide better insight usually non cubic crystals are anisotropic but polycrystalline ceramics composed of randomly oriented grains typically exhibit approximately isotropic behavior. It is an intrinsic property because it depends on the bond strength. Although possibility of variation with respect to grain size, phase assemblies, porosity and temperature eventually alter it for bulk material which is composed of several particles of the virgin materials. Poor characteristics including size, shape and distribution and their relationship with modulus can predict the failure of material under load and deformation. The mercury porosity meter can measure poor characteristics and history. If we check this image, the variation of E concerning grain size and porosity is prominent and follows certain equations with variations of different degrees of porosity percentages. In refractory hardly nanoscale grains exist and their influence can be neglected below 30 nanometer grain size where the in this region where the entire mass acts as a wave and exhibits low elastic modulus due to high strain results of low stress. So, in brief when the porosity is increasing the E is decreasing. And empirically we can get the elastic modulus with having different pore content. Analogous to the porosity, the temperature reduces the modulus at high temperature, where bonds between crystal become weak, resulting in larger strain and crystals are not pulled back to the same position as intermolecular forces become weak so elasticity decreases at high temperatures. A simple impulse excitation of vibration method has been shown in the video and elastic modulus can be calculated from relevant equations. Despite this method we can measure E through flexural and ultrasonic method. The latter method is a well accepted technique for large shaped refractories which is usually non-destructive test. 
a recent development indicates the alumina spinel carbon with having 50 GPA elastic modulus. While comparing the E value for different great magnesia carbon bricks with virgin materials MgO and graphite, we can see the existence of a large difference and it is attributed to porosity and different quality of binder. One can predict why peach bonded magnesia carbon refractory has relatively low thermal shock resistance compared to resin bonded magnesia carbon because this is the product of this and this here e here is low here is i this slide will answer a few common questions like why does ceramic have higher compressive strength than tensile strength why is the basic difference between strength and toughness how can we achieve high strength and toughness together and some fundamental aspects so compressive strength or ccs that is cold crushing strength tells us how much load the refractory can bear in cold conditions cracks in compression tend to propagate stably and twist their original orientation attributed to a high degree of intergranular friction and thus a slow deflection rate along the compression axis. During the crack propagation under compression slow extensive cracks links up with multiple cracks and develop a crack in this zone. In crack propagation introduce average crack length C average. during compressive mode of failure and can be expressed as this k i c is the crack tip in stress intensity and z is constant in consideration of load displacement plot material a has high strength compared to b but b has high toughness as a product of load and displacement is more that is related to fracture surface energy. The stable crack propagation enhances fracture toughness. So, suppose this is two system one crack is like this one initial crack if it is go like this this is the failure first if crack follows like this part the it has high fracture toughness. The stable crack propagation enhances fracture toughness which can be done through different toughening mechanisms and achieve both high strength and toughness. So, if we able to enhance the area like this, so that means we are getting the much more strength and fracture toughness together. Here, I have tried to compile different CCS data concerning composition, processing condition and properties for both shaped and unshaped refractories to develop and synchronize the performance analysis. For example, the influence of carbon content and temperature indicates the different levels of CCS variation as carbon has oxidation behavior and the graphite has flaky structure. Similarly, dense and porous refractory have influence on CCS like this. Answer refractory mostly castable strength depends on hydraulic cement content, cement water ratio, curing time, humidity and it varies also with respect to temperature. Cold modulus of rupture indicates the material bending strength and is and it is an important parameter for quality control and development of refractory linings. Usually when the tensile stress 
in the bottom of the beam equals the module of rupture, it is referred to as the cracking or moment of failure initiation. An optimum grain size may facilitate the best result of it, since the stress is inversely proportional with the diameter of grain. Now, how does it become useful to develop and analyze refractories? We can start from the load displacement plot, where the characteristic plot of material A indicates the probability of catastrophic failure, B semi-stable and C stable type. Total work done in the area under the curve may provide the fracture surface energy. A higher value with more deflection or displacement indicates more crack resistance and stability eventually providing better thermal shock resistance. Some typical MOR, E and surface energy values have been provided for fire clay and high alumina brick in which high dense and alumina content has a higher MOR than fire clay brick. Processing conditions and porosity content also influence the flexural strength. Here we can see such variation for the alumina system. In recent development, a distinct variation in COMR has been noticed with respect to different compositions. Despite composition, heat treatment such as curing and cooking in reducing conditions also alters the COMR which is very useful information to simulate the failure analysis. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you found this lecture informative and thought provoking. I wish you all the best for future endeavors. Please get in touch with me for further explanations if required. Encountering with your knowledge and interest in the next lecture, have a nice time ahead.